This one is dedicated to each and every one of you who appreciate a great glass of wine. You know what I mean? It's Monday. Let's raise a glass to the beginning of another week. It's time to unscrew, uncork, or savor a bottle. And let's begin exploring the wine glass. Today, I am sitting down with Scott Matthews of 915 Lincoln Winery in Paso Robles. Scott's tasting room is located in beautiful downtown Paso. As mentioned on the downtown website, see show notes for link. The Paso Robles downtown wine district is a captivating destination for wine enthusiasts. It offers convenient wine tasting with a diverse range of options from established wineries to boutique producers allowing you to experience a variety of wine styles. The district's accessibility and proximity make it easy to navigate and explore different wineries without spending excessive time commuting. While you're listening, take a moment to subscribe, rate, and review. Exploring the Wine Glass. Taking one minute of your time is the only way the algorithms will suggest exploring the wine glass to others. And since you are enjoying the podcast, other wine lovers will too. Slancha. Hey everybody, I'm Lori Budd, a UC Davis winemaking program, Spanish wine scholar, Somme Day service, champagne and Cotteron specialist, and a WSET level 2 graduate. You can find Exploring the Wine Glass on all the socials, as well as your favorite podcast catchers. If you haven't subscribed yet, now's the perfect time to swipe, subscribe, rate, and review. Stay in the know about all things wine by visiting my website, exploringthewineglass.com. I promise I'll never tell you what to drink, but I'll always share what's in my glass. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So we are back in downtown Paso, and I am here with Scott Matthews of 915 Lincoln. And he is located on Riverside, so uh, part of downtown, but maybe a little forgotten on this part. So we're here to make sure that people know exactly where to come for some incredible wine. So welcome, Scott. Oh, thank you. Well, glad to be here. So first question always, always, always is the origin story. How did you find your way to wine? Oh, gosh. Just um, just a passion for wine. Um, I moved out here um, oh, a little over 20 years ago and uh, it just, you know, immediately took to the wine scene, um, me and, you know, my wife and, and we used to go wine tasting, learned good wine, met a lot of people and just fell in love with it and, you know, I wanted to take it, take it deeper and um, met this guy named Charlie Pillillo. I just have a little vineyard just to have a house out on Willow Creek, a uh, uh, winery and everything. And um, one day I decided you know, I was going to make some wine. And a family member gave me this uh, uh, little kit to make oh, kit right. wine. And I told him I was going to make some kit wine. And Charlie looked at me real funny and goes, what? And, uh, and, uh, and you're not going to make a kit wine. You're going to come to my house. You're going to pick some grapes because you have a nice little vineyard. And I'll teach you how to make wine. And so I've been making wine ever since. So it's a wow. fantastic story. He's, uh, you know, I mean, he's passed uh, a few years back. Uh, but uh, yeah. So how many, how much did you pick that first year? Oh gosh, I did, uh, you know, probably about 30 gallons. It did about Felt gallons. like 5,000. Felt like a lot of it, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, just uh, 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 almost a bin, not quite, you know, half a bin full or something. <laughs> it was enough to get started, and uh, um, yeah, you know, you get the you get hooked on it. <laughs> yes, and, uh, yeah. and yeah. it's so much better than hooked on phonics. Oh, it, it is <laughs> uh, a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, are you when you're harvesting? Are you still doing all your own picking? Uh, I've done some, no. um, not all the time. I, um, I try not to. <laughs> That's hard work. Uh, but I do, I do, I pick a, a lot of my grapes, especially small lots, you know, a ton, or get some friends, and, 
You know, I, I found that I can't go too much over two tons with friends because then they don't. They, they then they want to drink friends. everything. Right, right. <laughs> no, right? It's hard work, but yeah, no, it, it's it's all good. Uh, they love it too. But yeah, I give wine. I give a lot of wine away that way. Uh, nice, uh, good helpers. And, uh, but yeah, it's hard work. Um, admire the pickers because. Yeah, well, it takes me five hours. They could probably do in the end. Right, absolutely. Right? <laughs> it's amazing. That's how I feel when it's pruning time. I, I love to prune. So I sit there and I go in the vineyard and I prune and, you know, and I cut. But I'm literally in my head, one, two, cut, one, two, cut, one, two, cut. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're like in the fifth row <laughs> oh, <laughs> laughing oh. at me. Yeah, that's about <laughs> it. I, I, I completely understand. <laughs> But the Friends thing, that reminds me of that episode, the Seinfeld episode with Keith Hernandez, of uh, when Keith Hernandez asked Seinfeld to uh, help him move. Yeah. And he's like, well, we're friends, but I don't think we're that good of friends. So like, you, you, have, yeah. to, you have to rate your friend level before you ask them to help harvest, right? <laughs> there you go. Heck yeah. <laughs> so 915 Lincoln, it's kind of a cool little, I know the backstory, but the listeners yeah. don't. So yeah. tell us how we got to that name. Well, you know, 915 Lincoln um, is, is where it all began for me. And uh, that's actually my address where I made my home wine. <laughs> And uh, 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 and it's actually in Templeton, and everybody tells me not to tell people that, but I don't I have say, any well, stalkers yet. But, so, <laughs> um, but I was no. going to say, is it still that address? <laughs> it is still that address, but uh, you know, I can't make it there anymore, so I make it over at Locatelli and and, and here at Riverside, I sell it, so um, it all works out. But yeah, I just want to pay homage to to where it all began. Um, my name's Matthews is a common name, and there's a winery up in Oregon, Matthews. Yeah. And so- That uh, probably would have caused yeah. the season to cyst. Yeah, that would, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of that in the wine business. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so 915 Lincoln, a unique name. Um, what, what I love about it, it starts with a number, so I'm always number one on every list that comes out. <laughs> right? It's like, a A A A Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like nine, and then all of a sudden everybody starts, or you know, I'm table yeah. one on right. every. Right. That's why. That's why all the. I, this is probably horrible to say, but it is true, right? All the Chinese restaurants, at least in Jersey, the Chinese restaurants yeah. are number one Chinese restaurant. Yeah. Number one, number one. Like, how can you all be number one? Okay. okay. <laughs> But it is true, right? You're looking in the, well, yeah. we don't have phone books anymore, but yeah. you're looking in the phone book or you're yeah. looking down thing. And I know that you are, as as Dracina is, you are in the Atascadero chamber. Yeah. And, you know, being a D, we're way down. You got to yeah. scroll down yeah. there, but 915 <laughs> is right there. right there, right? As soon as you go to that page. <laughs> hey, the downtown map. Versus yep. 915. <laughs> yep. <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah. yeah um so that that's incredible that you know you pay homage to to where it all began uh and you now you can park a car in your garage because there's uh, no one yeah. no well you know <laughs> there's still a lot of stuff there <laughs> 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 that is, yeah, most people do. <laughs> I love wine equipment. Yes. So on your labels, and um, I'm going to call it your yeah. tagline or yeah. slogan, you have of the people, by the people, for the people. Yeah. So very patriotic. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, the way I see it, you know, and I got, you know, the flag yes. and, and all that that stands for America. We're all Americans. And you know what? If we're drinking wine, it brings us all together. Everybody can be friends drinking wine. That, I don't care our political beliefs. Yeah. I have friends of all political beliefs. Doesn't matter. And wine brings us together for sure. So, that common yeah. core interest. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so that I like it, you know. And I'm, I'm not going to lie. I've had your wise before, but I've actually yeah. never really noticed that tagline before. Yeah. I think that's because you're always just pouring it for me, and yeah. you know, we're just ah, yeah. pouring into the glass. But I like it. And is that on all of your yeah. labels? Yeah. And that's kind of my logo, the whole the flag thing the there. Flag and then, you know, put most of my information in the story on the back. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so this one, is this Kula Vineyard? Um, yeah, this is actually yeah. from Kula Vineyard. Yeah, uh, he is a vineyard out in El Pomar, um, out on the east side. Um, this cab is, uh, you know, very special, one best of class at San Francisco this year. So, yeah, absolutely. He's got some good grapes. And then we, me and uh, Chris uh, trade wines in here. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, well, we have it in the glass. It is, you know, like quarter to 11, but it's, you know, I just spoke yeah. to my mom on the phone. She's on the East Coast, so yeah. it counts, right? It we're counts. past, we're past noon. Absolutely. So we're in the glass. We're, we have your cab saw in the glass. It is the 2021 El Pomar. Yeah. Uh, oh, and you are very specific with the alcohol, 15.58. <laughs> <laughs> that, that might be a little insight into personality there. I don't know, maybe. You know, I, I just did it when I was, you know, doing my labels and didn't even think about it. But yeah, everybody brings that up to me. Oh, you went to another decimal. Yeah, I know. Well, you know what? Anything that makes it unique. Anything yeah. that stands out, right? Everybody knows this is too, everybody. <laughs> Because it is rare. It is very rare. It is yeah. rare to see it. To you know, it's bad enough we have to put it on there to start off with. Yeah. <laughs> Never <Yeah>. mind. <laughs> to the yeah. point point five eight. Now, did you figure that out, or you just have a spreadsheet that figures that out, and mm-hmm. you you didn't push that little oh oh you know that zero zero mm-hmm. one more? <laughs> no, I you know I, I make them, and yeah, I just I just you know I mean that's what you get from the lab. So <laughs> oh true. <laughs> this is okay. from the lab, yeah. so I just put it on. And didn't even honestly didn't even think about that being you know. Do they all go to? to do they all go um, to the second uh, decimal point? Uh, I think it I, should. I'm starting not to. No, I think you should. I think you should keep them all to, yeah. to that. Maybe, yeah, maybe even with it. the help. Yeah. Go to the third digit. I mean, why not? Why not? <laughs> why not? Right? Fifteen point five eight two. That I think that would. I think that That's should be it. there. Heck yes. Yeah. <laughs> got, got, got to got to have it. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So tell me about the twenty one harvest of this reserve Cabernet oh, Sauvignon. The, these I just grapes. almost said Franc. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just so used to Franc. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. You know. <laughs> so Cabernet yeah. Sauvignon. Yeah. This um, uh, these grapes are just fantastic. From from uh, the vineyard came to me had a uh, um, great. Uh, great bricks, uh, high bricks, because they just kept going, and the, but the acid stayed very high as well. So I think, you know, t- to me, making wine, it has to be balanced, and this is extremely balanced, whether you're high alcohol, low alcohol, it just needs to be balanced, so it tastes good and smooth. And this is 15, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a high alcohol, but uh, it, I'll, you know, challenge you to taste it from right. tasting the wine and guess it, because... It's very well balanced, goes down nice and smooth, high acid, um, high bricks, and that's one thing we do in past the rubble, very good. Uh, doesn't get mentioned a lot, you know, right. that those acid levels stay stay strong. And so you know? 2021 was that ungodly heat spike, and so that was very helpful um, to Cabernet Sauvignon because, yeah. and, but you're also on the east side, so that's more yeah. helpful. I know people talk west side versus east side and all that stuff, but I mean, Cabernet Sauvignon is somewhat of a late ripener. And lots of times, if it's a cooler vintage, like last vintage, right, 2023 was a cool vintage, and we see a lot, well, probably not anymore, but you saw a lot of grapes left on the vines, and those are those late ripeners that are there but with that heat spike it was like 18 days straight of 105 plus um and that kind of shut down the vines but then when it broke that allowed that cab saw to come in nicely and now a word from our sponsor the 27 individual tasting rooms that make up the downtown wine district are situated in the heart of Paso Robles city center where you are only steps away from all Paso Robles has to offer in the way of dining, shopping, and entertainment. Visit downtown Paso Robles to find yourself among the greatest concentration of wineries in the area. In downtown, consumers can experience Paso Robles' rich and diverse wine country lifestyle, sample quality wines from each of the region's 11 distinct sub-appellations, have the opportunity to meet vintners that are as passionate about downtown as they are about their wine. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, I like I like east side cabs. I do think uh, cab needs a little more heat to get the structure and complexity that's in a cab. Um, but, you know, I mean, I, I do also think they're the east-west side. a little overblown. I mean, it is. We well, have some microclimates everywhere really right. and you know it's a few degrees difference to be honest and it kind of depends on where you're at on the west side and where you're at on the east side 
Um, but I just think that you know certain ones do like a little bit more heat, and Cad is is one of those. Um, a lot of the rooms do great on the west side, but right. you know I got some good east side rooms too. So it's past the Robles. I think we're all good. <laughs> Absolutely, I agree with that. I like it. I like it. So when you harvested this, walk us through that winemaking process. Um, well, you know I, I harvest this, um, and just all beautiful fruit. I mean, it was one of those that I could just put it in. I mean, and didn't really have to do anything to it. Um, I like to do a cold soak. I do okay. a, at least a three day cold soak. Um, and then, you know, Why don't so, you just, I'm going to interrupt you. Yeah. Why don't you just explain what that cold soak is for the listeners and why winemakers like to do that? Uh, cold soak, uh, basically you, you put, it, um, you, you crush the grapes, put it, and this is actually, um, this particular one I, I did whole berry. Okay. So I just left it in the fermenter for an extra, uh, after in there for three days, just to nice and and, and, and get some color resonated, let it sit with the skins a little bit longer, um, and, and just, just get nice and uh, bright and, and get that color going. Um, and, and then before you, you do all that, before you set it off, uh, you know, with yeast and, and everything else and, and, and let it go, basically, you know, just get that nice color. Um, the, the whole berry um, also, I think, contributes to the smoothness of the wine, um, I mean, you ha you see a lot of people trying different things, whole berry, you know, and then whole cluster. Um, this isn't whole cluster, you know. Um, I I don't want the vegetable uh, that a whole cluster can can put into the wine. Um, so I uh, you know I left the whole berry just and that was the first time I had done it. I was yeah. trying new things and I had the equipment at the time to do it <laughs> because honestly that's a big thing, something that can actually you know do that. Um, and, but it does, it, it, you know, they break apart as, as the, it goes through and even through the cold so most of them are already broken apart and, and, um, gets in there, try to do a, a nice, uh, a, a, like a slower ferment, fermentation, um, you know, in, in a cooler, slower fermentation. Um, but it'll always spike a little bit. Um, I, uh, I do use yeast. I, you know, I believe, uh, um, most yeast is, is all natural anyway. It's, it's from somewhere in the world and just to get a nice, good, smooth, um, uh, uh, fermentation. And so I, I did that. I, you know, I love using neutral oak. Um, I do introduce a little bit of oak to it, uh, on, on my cabs. Um, but I don't want to overpower the wine with oak. I mean, I love oak, but just a hint of oak um, goes a long way, um, and you know, just kind of my style, and uh, it worked pretty well. This was, uh, uh, you know, a year and a half in in the barrel, and there were six to eight months aging in the, um, you know, in the bottle, bottle. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, nice set just came out beautifully. I mean, nice deep cherry, bright red yeah. fruit. Um, doesn't get the vegetal as nope. some uh, newer um, cabs can have, um, and uh, just a beautiful wine. Um, I kind of call, call this my wow wine because you know you, it's always really awesome when you're behind there and someone tastes something and tastes your wine and they're like, wow! wow. You can tell <laughs> the look on their face, and, and this definitely is a wow wine. And um, like I said, one best of class at uh, San Francisco and in its class range and um, uh, just a just a great wine my best seller yeah I think that um, Cab Sauv has that wow factor here um, because people are used to a region that shall remain nameless <laughs> um, that is very well known for oaking yeah and I think that you know, you're proud of this fruit. You, you feel this fruit was beautiful on the vine, beautiful through processing. And then when you over oak it, oak takes away, you know, the fruit. It yeah. mutes it yeah. to some sort. And then you start to change what those that flavor profile is. And if you have beautiful fruit, you yeah. want to express that beautiful fruit. Why hide it? You know, I mean, I like to go with the grape. I mean, you know, I, 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 I do, you know, I don't want to, if, want to call myself a minimalist, but I, I don't, I don't change the wine. You know, if I get a grape and, 
And you know, it's, it's low bricks uh, or lower bricks. I mean, I go with it. Um, I could guide it, you know, I think I guide it, but I don't change it. You know, I mean, it, the wine is, is going to be, you know, it tells me what it's going to be. I mean, I get in my, I don't even know, everybody asks, well, do you have a, I, and I really don't have a certain way that I do it all the time. I mean, I get my fruits in for, uh, for a minute. And I like to say, I, I, I talk to it. <laughs> it tells me what it wants and what it needs. I get the science, you know, I get the numbers on it, of course. And, but, um, you know, you, you, you just kind of let it roll and let it do its thing. And, and you know, I, I do a few things the same. But uh, for the most part, it's, you know, it's, it's what that feeling that comes to me at the time when I'm there tasting it. Touching it, looking at it, yeah. No ritualistic things, you know. There's winemakers who who put trolls on, you know, on yeah. it, or gnomes to keep the, you know, to keep the chloroquine out, or you know, crystals, or I know somebody who wraps it in a in a certain, yeah. you know, drape, you know, no ritualistic I'm not, things. I'm not, no, 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 not ritualistic, <laughs> not me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, not biodynamic either, right. not necessarily, but. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong, wrong with, with that. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, yeah, that's no. I just it's just me, me and my grapes, right? There you go. That could be a great song. Yeah, that's it. Me and my grapes. <laughs> yeah, but it is it is kind of funny, cool, interesting yeah. to see when you know you're going through these, you know, you're going through a winery or whatever, and you're seeing gnomes or trolls on top <laughs> of the bins you know it you know whatever you know it's like bingo hey. right the people who play bingo they they load their stuff up with whatever is you know their lucky being thing whatever works right. absolutely <laughs> <laughs> but when you start with grapefruit there's a little less luck needed right exactly well you know that's it i mean it's all it's luck and it's skill too you know um you, you got to be a winemaker you got to know what to do if such as things do go sideways well, yes. and this and that and I mean half of it is a living a, thing so yeah, it can go three sideways of, yeah, exactly <laughs> three quarters of being a line maker is just making sure it's nothing goes wrong right and then and then the, the little bit of the rest is to just guide it to where it needs to be in my opinion right. where it wants to be and um and, and that's that's really the secret. I mean, there is no secret. It's just, uh, and it is a living thing, and it does have everything to do with the grape and the, how it was, uh, you know, made, or, you know, grown. And uh, but but it does, you know. But once you get it, then then you know you got to do your thing. And, right. Uh, keep all the you know all that bad juju out of it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and there's a lot of bad juju that wants inside. So you yes. gotta. You know, you gotta you gotta keep it good and and um, and it takes care of itself. You know, right. uh, good grapes, passerobles. We we I mean we're so lucky in this area. We have we have the best. I mean we have the best wine everywhere. I mean not mentioning that other area. I put my wines <laughs> against them any day. So right. yeah, absolutely no problem. Yeah. yeah. So every time I do one of these interviews, I have to like, you know, go down the rabbit hole of finding out things about people, you know, to ask questions or whatever. So I was like, I Googled you yeah. and I, you know, wine so that it kind of yeah. pinpoints things. And I don't know if you know this, but there is a Scott Matthews who is an author <laughs> and he's like kind of pretty darn well known. And it yeah. says he loves wine. Oh, wow. So I don't know, maybe you need to send him some of your wine. Um, but he, he writes, um, Adam Drake series and it's, mm -hmm. it's like assassin's list list and oath to defend. It's all, yeah. it's all like American things. I was like, that's uh, kind of like, <laughs> you know, maybe uh, you should sell the books maybe in I the guess. tasting room, do Absolutely. that connection. Yeah. You know? I'm going to have to reach out. I did yeah. not know that. I know. Yeah. Right. The things you find <laughs> out on Google. Yeah. I know There's so much. Absolutely. <laughs> Heck yeah. Uh, so you said you moved to Paso about oh, 20 years ago. From yeah. where? I'm from Santa Maria. So it wasn't oh, okay. that far. <laughs> but it is a world of difference. And, uh, but um, yeah, uh, moved here. Uh, just love it up here. I mean, this place is, this place is like heaven. Um, it's so nice. Santa Maria has a lot of good wines there now. Um, they did not back then. You know, back then, it wasn't as you know, prominent as it is right. today. Um, but I think wine's everywhere now. Which is fantastic, but yeah, started drinking wine, and you know, and you come here, and you know, part of my story—it's hard to even tell my story without going through everything, you know. 
and and um, my wife actually had cancer, um, a cancer, and she um, fought for really hard. And you know, wine was one of those things that brought us together. I mean, she would have chemo, she's the toughest woman alive, and um, would have chemo, and you know, hey, we got like two hours left, so we'd go wine tasting for the <laughs> two, two hours Aww. after that, you know, and. Um, and she did pass, um, but uh, you know, uh, a lot of this is 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 from what we had and, and what we did, and um, the passion that it, it comes. And there will be more on that. You know, I'm going to have a special wine uh, coming up. I mean, not not right now, but uh, pretty soon. Look for it. That will be. You know, I'll give money to breast cancer research. You know, in, in honor of her, and um, oh, that's so nice. And that, so, but yeah, so that's coming. That's coming, but it has to be the right wine, right? You know, it has to be, you know, something uh, uh, nice to me. Well, it has to be a nice. It's going to be a big bad zen. Oh, okay. A Paso Robles, because women go for that are awesome and they're tough and strong. But it's going to be like I make everything balanced and nice and beautiful as well. So. Uh, but it has to be that because you know that's that's the the story that's the image right and and that's the truth big bold so strong big, bold, fighter strong fighter right. absolutely so do you have a vineyard in mind of where that zin's going to be coming from is it coming is this wine coming soon it's is, coming pretty like, soon in barrel um in my, well i've got to decide oh okay so i do have some stuff in barrel uh my house some stuff i just bottled that may end up getting in it may be just right for that so. and then that will be a, a vintage oh. every vintage once it oh. starts yeah Is that the game once plan? it starts it's gonna keep going yeah oh. yeah and do you make a zin now i do okay i do i make a couple different zins you know zinfandel back when it came 20 plus years ago that was zin was our great band. Right. it still is mm -hmm. i think um but yeah, Zen was everywhere, big bald Zen. So I mean, you know, it was back then it was as much alcohol as you can get. Yes. <laughs> yes, we used to call it a headache in a bottle. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was sixteen percent. I mean that's yeah. what you shot for. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it probably was the low the low level yeah. of that. That was the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was uh, but you know, but we got more fine. You know, I think everybody's palate's kinda you know, and moderated on that a little bit. Um, I think you look a, a, a little bit more on balance than anything. Um, I think you can have a wine if this is 15 and a half. I think you can have... 0.8. Yeah. 0.58. Or 0.58. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and it, it's just well balanced. So you don't you don't taste the, the heat in the right. alcohol. And the same thing would go yeah, for... Yeah, absolutely not. Um, yeah, a 13% or under 13%. You don't want the pucker of a high acid and uh, you know you need to keep those make sure those acids are in range with what you know with what and so it tastes nice and smooth but nice and big and yeah. old too so and you can do okay. it it's easy we can do it here in Paso so. yes yes so we are downtown Paso so what this is where your tasting room you chose to have your tasting room why did you choose to put your tasting room in downtown Paso oh, I, you know, I love Paso I mean, this is, you know, this place is the greatest place on earth, I think. Um, I love downtown, vibrancy downtown. There's so much to do downtown. Um, concerts in the park are coming up. Um, you know, it's just, it, it's the place to be, you know. Um, I, I don't have, you know, a place for a vineyard and a, a you know, a winery out and about. So uh, the next best thing is with Paso Robles. Here we are, you know, in town. Um, and plus, gosh, I can I can keep my car and walk downtown and, you know, I'll see someone singing, a band, uh, music everywhere. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a beautiful place. Um, and the people are awesome. Um, so that, I mean, this is, this is where it's at. I think, uh, you know, the wine and stream and El Paso, uh, Tascadero's coming on and Tipleton and, you know, I mean, they're great too, for sure. Um, uh, but, uh, but Pass is the place to be. Yeah. And I think downtown is just, I love it. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's the old little town, and like you said, you can walk everywhere. You can park your car wherever, and yeah. you know, you can walk around, and it's just so much history in yeah. downtown. And I think, although there's a lot of wineries in downtown, it's you know, you can walk safely yeah. Yeah. for the most part. Um, you know, <laughs> still don't walk and drink, no. <laughs> um, but you know, you can walk and you can go from winery to winery and. You know, I feel that the downtown 
wineries try to really support each other. Mm-hmm. I think that they really do try to help each other out. You know, Pastor Robles, I mean, that's been, ever since I was a kid, you know, coming up here, um, I live in Santa Maria, but we'd come up to the fair every year, and camp out at Nassimeno and, and go to the fair every day. And just, I, I've always loved this area and, and, and it's beautiful and everything else, but you know, it really comes down to just what you said, the people and the camaraderie and we all help each other. And nobody's against each other and you know, and it's not cutthroat. It's like, hey, you know, I'll give you three or four more places to go and, and, right. and, and everything else and everybody comes together. Um, and, and that's what, that's what makes it so special as well. I think people get that when they come here, um, you know, they, they notice that first off, you know, anybody from anywhere in the world, really, and, and especially, you know, from the Bay Area or coming up from Orange County or anywhere, and, and you come in and it's nice, slower paced, come in here in shorts and flip flops and drink world class wine, and I mean, and you're, you're at home. Yeah. It's just, it, you know, you can, you can do that, you can relax and have a good time. And I think everybody gets that. This just makes this place so special. And now, a word from our sponsor. Looking to be in the know about Dracaena Wines? Want to be the first to know about our new releases and special offers? All you need to do is sign up for our newsletter. There is no commitment necessary, and I promise you we won't spam your mailbox with loads of messages. Need another reason to sign up? Quite possibly the best reason? You'll immediately get a discount code for 10% off your first purchase and be privy to newsletter-only discounts. Let Dracaena Wines turn your moments into great memories. Visit our website, www.dracaenawines.com, or use the link in show notes to sign up. It will take you less than a minute, but the rewards will last a lifetime. What is your favorite thing about, or that could be the same answer, but what is your favorite thing about the wine industry and wine itself? Um, well, it is that. It's kind of a culmination of pretty much everything. Like I said, wine bringing people together. Um, you know, everybody's happy when they're drinking wine. You know? it's a, <laughs> it is. It's so much it's so much fun and brings everybody together. Um, I think the industry, because I worked in other industries, I was in banking, still do real estate too. Uh, but you know, you don't get that in other industries. You don't get the camaraderie and the, you know, being a part of something. And, uh, you know, we have industry events and everybody, you know, heck, something breaks down, equipment, you need something. There's always somebody right there to give you a hand and, and, and it just, it's just that, that camaraderie and that feeling being a part of something. When you're in the wine industry here in Paso, you're a part of something and you know it. And, and it's, it's big and it, and it's nice to be a part of that. Um, and so that's, that's, that, I mean, that's it. And that's what makes it special. Wine is fantastic. It's beautiful. It tastes good. Um, and it brings people together. I mean, you know, what can you say? It's just, uh, uh, um, there, there's, I mean, there's other spirits. I've made beer, I, you know, I've made spirits, I, uh, but you know, wine is just, you know, wine is complex and, and just special, you know, beer is a recipe, which is great, but it's a recipe, you know, right. uh, wine is the grape and it takes, uh, there's a lot of things that go into a good wine that have, you know, that are totally even out of my hands as, as the winemaker and, you know, so it, it's just a, I just, you know, it's magical. It's, you know, even in the movies, uh, you know, um, gosh, uh, that movie that ruined Merlot. Oh, that sideways? <laughs> sideways. But which it shouldn't have. No. But, because I made a great Merlot too. <laughs> uh, that won Orange County, won the competition in Orange County. So, um, but, um, but yeah, you know, but in that show, you know, he, he has his, you know, uh, sayings about wine. Um, and, you know, that's the truth. I mean, that's what wine is. It's just a, something very special to people. And people could come in, families, you know, everybody's got smiles on their faces and has a good time. And, yeah, that's what I love about it. So 915 Lincoln, where, what's your vision? Where do you see yourself? Because you're, you're relatively new. What vintage yeah. is this for you? Um, well, this, I've... I've made wine um, because throughout the years when I was home winemaking, I've made wine for with other winemakers and learned and everything throughout the process. And even before I had started, I had made wine 
um, in a couple of different places. I had some barrels. I'd help people out. Hey, can I make a couple of barrels in your, you know, your right. uh, uh, and, and place? And, and I did that. And I, and I went and got those barrels. And I said, hey, I'm Alan Pro, and I need my <laughs> barrels back. <laughs> and that's how I started. That's how I got the wine. So, so it's really been a culmination. This is about the third year of being, you know, pro, I guess, so to speak. Um, and, um, and I get to see, I want to grow. I got to get, I got to get sustainable, uh, you know, to be in myself financially with it. And that's where I'm headed to go on. I, you know, I'm not going to get huge, but I will get, you have to get a certain size to really just to survive, to right. be honest. And, and so it's a tough business. Wine, you know, cash flow wise, it's, it's a horrible business, but, <laughs> but, uh, but it will catch up to itself at some point, and, you know, and, and, and you can make money in wine. I don't care what anybody says, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you got to get there. So if I get to 1500 cases or 2000 cases at some point, um, and I will, and, and keep growing a, a little bit here and there. Um, and you know, it's just, a, it's sustainable, but I always want to make quality wine. And, and that's that's first and foremost is the wine. It has to be good. And, right. Um, um, and that's that's where I'm going to go and keep growing. So, do you have any events coming up? Um, we're going to do. Um, we're going to start. I'm going to see how this works. We're going to do a Sunday uh, thing, April uh, April 14th. Um, we're going to do a little Sunday gig with a, a, a wine club member who likes to play music, and he's really good. And so, yeah. Yeah, Phil. <laughs> and he's going to be here on Sunday from like 2 to 5, and we'll have some bites and, you know, have he's some He's working music, for wine. You know. He's he? working for wine, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which is the best thing for a, a, a wine, you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, but it'll be fun. We're going to do that. Uh, I'll have some new releases coming out, um, you know. Uh, if you're around, come by. Definitely leave your email. Um, join the club if you want. I've had some really good club parties. Um, but I will have a new release party in April as well for some new stuff coming out. I just don't have that date yet. Um, but that's that's probably the big thing, and it may become a, a every Sunday thing, and uh, we'll get different people playing too, and and stuff like that. So um, it'll be fun. I love my events. People, uh, we've had some pretty good events in here. Sometimes it's just an event to have an event. Right. There you go. <laughs> and uh, um, but yeah, that's that's that. I'm, I just don't have my um, new release uh, for April set yet, but I do have a few more lines coming out. So fantastic! Yeah. And so um, I always ask this question because it's just fun to hear. Um, I listen to. I actually can't say I always. I s- started asking this question because I listen to a, a podcast called Smart List, yeah. which I absolutely love. I get excited every time the new episode drops, and it's. It's Jason Bateman, Will Arnott, and Sean Hayes. Oh. And they are just BSing with themselves. And they have, again, obviously, somebody famous who comes on. But Sean Hayes is famous for asking, you know, when they, especially when somebody's on stage. So tell me about your stage disaster. Tell me about something that is a disaster. And I just think it's a, <laughs> it's a fantastic question. So because in winemaking, there's always something. It might not be a blow up in your face disaster, although I know some people who have had that happen too, but literally, <laughs> but have you had any like, oh my God, like panic modes or disasters or whatever? Because those are really just more fun. It, it happens a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, you know, I mean, luckily it's not, I mean, I haven't had anything too huge, but you know, you show up. Show up at a wine tasting and you don't have a corkscrew. You know? Oh, I've done that. <laughs> or a wine yeah. tasting. It's like, oh, but I think someone has one here. But it yeah. is embarrassing. It's like, huh? Uh, yeah. You're, <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. You can every little thing, you know. I mean, I, you know, uh, uh, you know, heck, I was bottling some wine. I was doing some hand bottling of wine. And the equipment I was using kept sticking. And it's like, squirt, because it sticks and it <laughs> squirts in my face. And, <laughs> And, you know, and everybody's cracking up and like, ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, just stuff like that. I mean, you know, um, having what you need, getting what you need, um, it, uh, yeah, a daily basis type of thing. I mean, it's so often that I can't even, I mean, you know, there's not one that stands out. <laughs> there's not because it's just, you know, you just roll through it. Yeah. And everybody, you know, yeah. 
Everybody gets it. And like I said, sometimes you got to borrow something. Yeah, absolutely. Usually it's just not having what you need, being prepared or, you know. Okay. This is always, you know, you do all this thinking and preparing for, like, to go to an event or to go to a tasting and then, and then you forget, like, yeah. yeah, at least wine, too. It's like, oh, I forgot that wine. Oh, that was yeah. Like, that was kind of feature, easy. and I didn't bring it. Ah! <laughs> That does happen. Right. Well, that's not too bad. I know no. I know a winemaker who yeah. was making a Amphora uh, Chenin Blanc and didn't uh, stabilize the Amphora well enough and the Amphora tipped over and he lost not only the Amphora because oh. <laughs> it cracked open, but all of the Chenin Blanc that oh was in goodness. there. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, that, that's like a big... That's yeah. a big disaster. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I've seen that. And in fact, I was, um, well, you know, one time uh, where I make my wine and, you know, somebody else was in the fork with and they were moving some stuff and they had some, and then the, the barrels kind of tipped over. <laughs> and yeah, I was sitting here watching. Ah! It's like slow motion. Ah! Luckily, though, well, it didn't. It was good. The person oh. actually made a nice correction. and. I got it at a spot where it wasn't going to fall off, so it worked. It worked out. But those are, the, yeah, yeah, wine. You can't get the wine back. No, you know, no matter what, it's just is it's wine. But you know, as as, as Charlie Pillow once told me, don't cry over spilt wine. Oh well, you know what? When when you're watching the dollar signs go down the drain, <laughs> it, it, it does. It, it does bad, hurt a little. But you know, you yeah. just you know. Our, our 2013, the forklift driver yeah. dropped our, one of our yeah. barrels and yeah. it looked okay when we put it in the truck to yeah. move because we were moving it. Yeah. And by the time we got to the new location, which was, I don't know, 25 minutes, um, uh, the back of the truck had all wine in it. Uh, and then we were panic mode to just find a barrel, you know, so like that yeah. went into a stainless steel barrel because that was all we had at the time mm. and then moved it back. So... Yeah, yeah. It, that that was tears. That oh, was tears because you're just point. seeing you're you're, yeah. you're seeing your passion, your love, your you know your money. <laughs> that is you tears, know? and you know, and and wine is a lot about logistics. You mm -hmm. really you really have to plan three or four steps ahead just to how just to you yeah. know avoid things like okay, how can I? What do I do? Um, in that case, that yeah, because you didn't know it didn't right. break right away, and they don't barrels are. Yeah. It's funny that way, you know, or it'd be great one, and then they just sprint, a hole just pops in, yeah. and then, you know, and all of a sudden, what the heck? It yeah. fantastic. I was happy that it, it yeah. leaked in the truck because yeah. if we got it to the new location and put yeah. it up and didn't know it was leaking, yeah. well, you know, that's a bigger, a that's, bigger disaster, absolutely. you know? Uh, so tell us, where do you get all of your grapes? How do you source them? Um, I source them from different places. Um, you know, I, I um, uh, um, a part of a few groups. I got Wines and Steins is a group and independent grape growers, ICRA. Um, and there's a lot. ICRA has 130 small growers. Um, and anybody can go to our, our website and, and, um, and, and look who's selling grapes and stuff. So I have, I have a lot of friends too with, with vineyards and through the years you meet people. And, and um, so I got a few places I go to, but I just look for good quality uh, grapes. Um, you know, try to get obviously try to get the best deal I can. I mean, being um, coming from home wine making to you know production, um, it's just you know I, I was used to it. home wine making. You're just trying to find grapes at all, anyway, right. just because you know, and you can't spend much because you're not making any money. Uh, but you, you get there and you find out well, you know, when you pro, it's not a lot. And it's just starting. It's hard to find, but you want quality. But you know, we have good quality. Uh, um, I've taken advantage of the east west side thing and got some good east side grapes. I do get some good west side grapes as well. Um, but, but uh, you know, I mean, if, if they're good quality grapes and we have um, it everywhere, they're just talking to people and, and you know, checking out their vineyard and, and everything like that. So we have so many out here. Uh, I do like a lot of smaller uh, of vineyards. and. Sometimes people who have just two or three acres of vines and they just meticulously take care of them and they're overlooked by all the other right. everybody else it's just you know but you know I'm usually only getting a couple tons of a varietal anyway at the very most and and so I you know when I'm when I'm looking I I, I find it and, and sometimes I'll make deals with growers and make some wine for them and 
Yeah. And, and I'll take the rest of the grapes and it, that kind of works out pretty good when you're on a budget. Yeah. Um, because, you know, coming up with it, that's what makes the, it hard. You know, you got to come up with all this money for harvest and you got to come up with all this money for bottling. And that's not your normal everyday money that you right. got to come up for, for everything else. And, and so it's, you know, you're always, uh, uh, in the beginning, you're always looking for something. I mean, it will get to a point, you know, on the business cycle that it'll, it'll even out. Um, but it takes a little it's tough bit to, to start, get there. right? Tough to start because you're not if you're especially if you're making reds. Yeah, you're not seeing you're outlaying at least two vintages. Yeah, before you can even really sell exactly a bottle. You exactly, know? you know, you've got to, and that's what helped. And I, I, had, I knew I was going to do this. I knew I was going to go, and you know, and help some people make some wine, and so made a couple barrels in there, you know, uh, in their winery because it's got to be in a bonded winery. So. Um, and so I, I, I thought ahead and I had some of that. That's all gone now. So it's all the <laughs> stuff I've been making. You know, this is the first place I had, I had made up. Um, and, uh, so yeah, but it's, it's all good. It's all a challenge. You know, you're constantly thinking, okay, what, you know, you're constantly on edge. Everything's on edge because, you know, you're worried about your wine. You're worried, you know, it's just, it's, but at some point you do it long enough and it's just, you, you know, it, it is what it is. And, uh, it's gonna it's gonna happen one way or another. A lot of times the wine takes care of itself, yeah. you know. Not being over, you know, not don't overreact to anything because overreaction can make things worse. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's all oh, this, well, you know, maybe it's not tasting right. Right, let's just let it sit. Right. Let's just come back in a month or two or three. Right. And I'll, I mean, and I've had that, and then all of a sudden, bam! Wow, this is fantastic. Let's ball up right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, I mean, it does. And wine is like that. I, you know, I tell, uh, you know, in the group wines and science and, and, you know, the home wine making group that I had belonged to for years. And, um, you know, and, and a lot of people, oh my gosh, my wine's not taking, what you said on it. Just, you know, and don't keep it opening it up. And, right. You right. know, and, and just, just let it take care of itself. And wine will take care of itself. You'd be surprised at how much wine will fix itself and if there's you know and sometimes it's just it's just tight it's just new it's just you know um or it's something you ate that day before you tasted it <laughs> yes and and you, you know and if you taste it once you got to taste it again mercury could later. be in retrograde yeah. you know? yeah, it could be a lot of stuff you know and um so it's um it's just i mean you know it, wine is magical that way i think so what's on the horizon for the 2024 vintage? I was out in the vineyard uh, a couple of days ago. We have like two buds. Yeah. So it's starting slow, yeah. but starting. So what's on the horizon for 2024? Um, I will. Um, I didn't do a cab in 2023, so I'll do a cab. And I've been trying to get some good Merlot grapes. I'm going to find some because I did. Uh, I had a, a 19 Merlot that you know, won Orange County, won Best Red. Um, premium price red um, and so that was huge and uh, so I want to get some more Merlot um, do that for sure uh, but you know I kind of again it's kind of what you know what's 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 doing well that year um, okay. you know and uh, I'll talk I'll, I you know the smaller you know being a small producer I don't I don't usually go out and you know get get my grapes really early I kind of like to see how it all unfolds a okay. little bit um, there's usually some, always some grapes around, um, that are good and I got an eye on and, you know, when you're only getting two tons, it's just, and it's hard to dictate anything when you're only getting a couple tons. It's just, you know, well, I want a couple tons of that, you know, or I talk to somebody and say, Hey, can I, you know, and, and a lot of times, yeah, sure. You know, it's just, like, you know, but I'm kind of beholden to, to them. Now, smaller guys, like I said, two or three acres and grapes or five acres, 10 acres, you know, I can sometimes go in, okay, I'm, you know. This is what I want, and, and, and you know, sometimes, well, come and pick it. Okay, right. well, then I'll pick it. You know, to get it you know, or, you know, the, this is a lot of times, hey, the winery, you know, they're picking tomorrow. <laughs> okay, well, you know, get it or not. So, right. right. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, um, being small it's, 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 it has some has advantages, as I think I can really work my wine good, but it has its disadvantages as to where you're at logistics. in line for everything, right. you know, logistics. and. Uh, but you got to be a little more flexible, you know, and, just, and, and, and that's fine. Are all of your wines single varietal, or do you have um, a blend? I do have some blends. Okay. Um, I don't do as many blends. You know, blends have, have gotten really popular here in Paso, but uh, I like to do some single varietals. You know, I got right now on the tasting menu, I got a Pete Verdot, it's 100%. 
a Malbec that's 100%, so you get three of the Bordeaux, three of the five Bordeaux grapes at 100%. You know, where, where can you do that anymore? Um, but I do, I have a Rome blend, I have a Grenache Nouvelle blend um, that I just new release. And so, um, so yeah, I'll be doing a few more blends, but you know, the blend's gotta work. It's gotta, it's gotta make everything better, both sides right. better. Um, I don't want to put a wine in there that I'm not just to I'm, say it's in just there. to say it's a blend, right. and so I don't I, I don't do that. I won't, you know. I mean, I'll have have my blends, but it's gonna, you know, it's it's got to be better. It's got to be synergistic and, and make both sides better to to make all that work. So all right. So did I miss anything oh, that you gosh. want people to know about um, nine fifteen Lincoln? Well, I think you know what, what's nice too about being small is you know I'm in the tasting room, so. You can come to my tasting room, you're gonna taste with a winemaker, and I don't charge you anything extra for that. In fact, <laughs> you know, come on in. I mean, it's just, you know, um, I'm old school passerobles, you know. I mean, to me, uh, tasting fees are secondary. Come in and have a good time. And, you know, almost nobody pays a tasting fee in here. You come in, buy a bottle, uh, you know, um, it's just, a, uh, um, it, it's how it goes. I like the, I like the Gary Everly idea. Um, you know, uh, of, of no tasting fees. Um, and, and because, you know, my, the wine speaks for itself. So you come in here, you know, you can finagle a tasting out of me no matter what. And, um, <laughs> And, so now, folks, you know where he know. lives <laughs> and how to get free wine. Exactly. You know, I know. But yeah, come on in. I mean, it's a, yeah, it's a fun experience. Everybody has a good time. No one leaves here uh, unhappy. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. I will make sure of that. All right. <laughs> and when are you open for walk-ins? Uh, walk-ins Thursday through Sunday, um, 12 to 6, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and then 11 to 5 on Sunday. Um, any other time by appointment, but those times just come on in. Um, and uh, yeah, any other time, heck, I'm, I'm always working. Yeah. <laughs> this is a this is a seven day uh, you <laughs> know, seven day a, a week job, and and I love it anyway. So. Okay. And just explain, we talked about that you're on uh, Riverside, so just tell us where some landmarks or whatever, what that address is, how people can find you. Yeah, I, I'm a little, uh, you know, you, you got to kind of walk around the corner from downtown. Um, and uh, if, if probably people would remember Kramer Guitar Sellers was here for a long time. I'm right now from where they were, um, a Derby's down the street. Um, you know, you got Stilson's around around the corner from me. So you just kind of come around the corner, and um, and you'll find me going down to Riverside if you're going north on Riverside, um, north part of town. Um, yeah, just a nice little place, and come on in. All right. Well, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to talk to me. Uh, I'll raise a glass to your cab song, which is delicious. Thank you. All right. Oh, and uh, 915lincoln.com? 915lincoln.com. Absolutely. All right. Can't forget about that. Absolutely. Can't forget about that. <laughs> they can place orders online. They can place orders online. I, I'm, I'm revamping my, my website a little bit, but... Um, that's there, but you can place orders online, text me, call me, email, I don't care, come in. I'm, I'm available. So. Wine for all. Wine for all. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Thank you. The Bible water got turned right into This has been another episode of Exploring the Wine Glass. Thanks for listening. If you have suggestions on what topics you would like me to discuss, please reach out on social media. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as Exploring the Wine Glass. I am also on LinkedIn as Lori Hoyfoot. Of course, you can always email me at exploringthewineglass at gmail.com and sign up for my newsletter at exploringthewineglass.com. If you enjoyed what you heard, please rate, review, and subscribe to help others find me more easily. And most importantly, tell your wine-loving friends, because if you like the podcast, they will too. Podcast music is Wine by Key Vince. Until next week, slancha. I want to let you go right now. Tonight.
amongst the glass right now. 